good afternoon everyone. This is Mr. Millet and I'm going to be discussing a few questions that I gave my grade 9 students on topographical maps. Now I'm doing this exercise out of the social science textbook Via Africa Social Science Grade 9. The exercise can be found on page 42 and we've got the actual topographic map on page 43. So one of the questions stated the following does the map extract show rural or urban settlements provide three reasons for your answers now, okay so if you have a look at this map, can move it down there so predominantly agriculture land with a little bit of forestry um so that's that's one of the the key things that we look at if we had an urban area we would have had a lot of more build-up area um, we can also say that there would have been a lot more infrastructure regarding roads. Um, we don't see uh, as much infrastructure, as much buildings, residential areas. Um, and that also can give us a clue. We can also state by looking at the area and looking at the dispersed buildings that this is a rural settlement. And also we can state that the population density is sparse or uh, rural areas gives a sparsely populated view uh, where if we had an urban area we would have had a lot of buildings very close to one another so that's for number three then there's also other reasons as well um, but I'm not going to mention everything I think you guys can can tell me on Monday or Tuesday the other question stated let's go to question four uh, what is the land mainly used for? What few factors evident on your map favor this land use? So, in the previous answer, I said, well, it's mainly rural and due to the cultivated land. So, very built up areas of agricultural land in the area. So, the land use is predominantly for agriculture. Clues that we can get is, of course, when we look at the key of a map, the key will clearly indicate that what I'm pointing to is cultivated land. Okay, so this is agriculture land. So we can use the symbols. Don't forget to use the symbols on your maps, on your topographic maps. So this is an exercise in the textbook. You won't see the key symbols here, but predominantly most of the time you will have the key at the bottom of the topographic map that we've been using. Um, you can also have a look at contour lines. Now, we look at, over here at the contour lines in this area. We'll notice these contour lines are very close to one another. Now, they're very close to one another. Remember, contour lines indicates not only the height above sea level, but also the land form. Because contour lines indicate the, land, or the relief pattern of the area, we can see that there's no cultivated land close by the hilly side or areas that are very steep but we will definitely see that there's a lot of cultivated land where the um, contour lines are far or further spread between one another which then tells us it gives us a, a idea that this area is suitable for um, agriculture due to also um, if you were to farm in hilly areas like this you will definitely need specific um, equipment to reach um, these inaccessible areas. Another key aspect that we can look at is the natural water bodies in the area. Okay, so if there's a lot of rivers or non-perennial water in the area, but we can clearly see here's a Caledon River running through the area that also gives us a good indication that there would be uh, agriculture uh, happening in the area. Um, another key symbol is if we look at the amount of dams that we also find in the area. There's a lot of catch-up dams in the area as you guys can see. And remember that these dams are not natural. Why are they not natural? Because they've got a dam wall. Yes, that, guys, that's correct. They build a dam wall right here. So it's infrastructure. It is Although water is natural, but it's a dam, it's a man-made structure. Remember that. That will often pop up into the questions. 
So we looked at the contour lines, we looked at the color codes or the symbols as well and the water bodies. That will also give us an indication. Then we can also look at another aspect and we can look at the infrastructure, like I said. There's not a lot of infrastructure in the area. Uh, we don't have a build-up accumulation of a network of roads. Um, that will also give us an idea, is this land for agriculture purposes or is it an urban environment? Um, there are other key aspects that we can also look at, but I think that's all for now, guys. I look forward to seeing you all in class.